All right, Jay, some people may not realize Utah State is located about 80 miles from Salt Lake City. It's known as a premier land grant and space grant university for its Mormon roots and now its basketball program. Just this month, the Aggies, now 24 and two overall, became the only team in the country to win 23 games in each of the last 10 seasons. Even more impressive when you consider their best player, not one of those teen kids. He's 26 years old and married, and the team only has two guys under 20 on the squad. Utah State coach Stu Morrill joins us now for more on the program. Stu, 10 straight seasons with at least 23 wins. What can you attribute most of that success to? Well, I don't think, Dana, a lot of people realize Utah State has uh, had a great basketball tradition. Uh, I got here 11 years ago, and we... We like to think we've added to that tradition, but Utah State's been to the NC2A tournament 17 times in, in its history, and uh, we just have a great fan base. Uh, we, we average uh, over 9,000 fans a night. We get about 4,000 students. Uh, our students are, are like they are at Duke. They're crazy and, and have a lot of fun, and, and that really gives us a, an excellent home court. Uh, we've got a lot of good teams with uh, some really good players. You don't win games without good players. And I've had a lot of excellent assistant coaches, several that are now D1 head coaches. So it's been a combination of things, and uh, we feel really fortunate that we've had uh, 10, 10 years like we've had. You make it sound so easy, although I know it could not be that easy. <laughs> uh, the 19-game winning streak that you had going was snapped this weekend by Boise State. What surprised you most about that game? What surprised me most is how surprised people were that we got beat by Boise. Uh, Boise's a, a team with a very good RPI. They're second in our league right now. They're they're 11 and one, 12 and one, I guess, at home after they beat us. Uh, we knew going in that they were certainly capable of of uh, beating us. Uh, we would have liked to have played a little better. I thought they played very, very well. Uh, but game in and game out, we've had to scratch and claw to get victories. Uh, you know, I say all the time we're a good team, but we're not a dominant team. And uh, that night, uh, Boise was better than us. Good team, not dominant. What would it take to be a dominant team? You know, I don't know how many, you know, there's a few dominant teams in the country, but there's a lot of parity in college basketball. And, uh, you know, we, we just, any way we can get wins, we'll take them. Uh, you know, we, we've been a team that uh, shoots good shots and, and pretty solid defensively. And we have real good balance. And uh, everybody buys into the system. And, and uh, you know, that, that helps. Uh, as a coach, when you coach uh, good kids with high character, that makes it a lot easier, that's for sure. As you mentioned those kids, uh, one of the things that I said about Utah State is the Mormon roots here, which means that a lot of the players on your team are Mormon, and at least if I understand correctly, that means that they'll then go on their mission while they're in school. How does that challenge you in recruiting? Well, a lot of the LDS kids go on missions. Uh, you know, I think when you look at the, the schools in the state of Utah, it's a little easier for us to deal with that because we've got kids coming and going. A lot of times they'll leave before they start their college career, and in some cases after one year. But uh, when you know when you got four or five in your program, uh, as as we often do this year, we've got more than that. But uh, you know you get used to dealing with kids coming and replacing them. Uh, you know with the, with kids going coming home, and and so it it all works out. It's been nothing but a plus for us because those kids that are older have just added so much maturity to our program and I always kid that they they're more capable of putting up with me which uh, <laughs> is not easy I guess. Well you you got to where I wanted to go next which meant you know your your average age is higher than a lot of teams you talk about the advantage of that what if any disadvantage is that having these older guys and maybe not some teenagers that you can get on a curfew and, and get to maybe uh, fall in line a little better. You know, Dana, I don't, I don't see a lot of disadvantages other than the fact that when they get first get home, uh, you know, it takes them a while. Uh, when I first came to Utah State, even though I was very familiar with, uh, with the mission thing, I had never coached uh, missionaries, and, and I thought a couple of them couldn't play at all that had just gotten back, and it really takes six months to a year to get back to form. That's about the only disadvantage. The, the maturity they gain uh, out in the mission field for two years is so positive uh, for us in terms of dealing with them day to day and them going through the rigors of a college season and all the preparation, all the practice. Uh, it's just a tremendous asset to have that maturity. Well, Coach, we appreciate you joining us. Congratulations on that unbelievable mark again with the uh, seasons that you've put together there. Uh, truly something that other schools can look at and be jealous of. Thanks for joining us. 
Dana, thanks for having me. Our pleasure. And Utah State next takes on Cal State Bakersfield Wednesday at home. Don't forget it.